Hi, welcome back to Third Rate Content. Today, we're not in the heart of Shrewsbury. We're in the suburbs of Shrewsbury, in that sort of area that's uh, hinterland between town and country. And very apt today, we're gonna to be taking in the Rebrook Valley uh, Park Nature Reserve. And we're also nearby, gonna be taking in some of the history of the Seven Valley Railway which we're on now. Um, it links up with a video we did in last summer, uh, the Bellevue video, which I'll tell you about in a moment. So buckle up and I'll see you out here. Yes, if we had been standing here 30 years ago, there would have been railway tracks running up here and a very rickety old fashioned railway bridge, open sides, um, just tracks basically going across this road. I did talk about it on, on, like I said, on the Bellevue video last year. Yeah, because we got about that far on the Bellevue video and we looked up here and said we were gonna do a video on it. And guess what? Today we are six months later. So that's Rebrook Avenue. Obviously that's Ree Street. And this is the site of the former railway bridge, which I did play on as a child. Probably not advisable, but it was 1980s rules after all. Yeah, so we are right now, feet on the ground on where the railway tracks would have been. The Seven Valley Railway was built between the eight years of 1858 and 1862. The railway was built by the original Seven Valley Ra Railway, but was soon taken over. But it was operated from its opening day on the 1st of February, 1862, by the West Midland Railway. I don't think, well, I'm pretty sure these houses behind this hedge wouldn't have been here when the railway was in its heyday. These are all 20th century housing developments. Though saying that, and slightly contradicting myself, there would have been a fair number of years where the railway would have gone right past yeah, the back of people's houses here. Housing developments. It's the, it's suburbia, really. Shrewsbury spreading out and it's, sub and it's suburbs being built as you can see here and probably early 1980s development Adams Ridge I think it's called houses behind this Adams Ridge sign wouldn't have been here they were built in the 1980s the railway would have continued straight through where the houses are now and gone straight down where this path is now this is basically the line of the railway and the road here the old Shrewsbury bypass wouldn't have been here then. That was built in the early 1970s. The gauge of railway used by the Seven Valley Railway was, wait for it, 1,435 millimeter, or also known as standard gauge. Yeah, you can buy tickets to ride, uh, ride the remnants of the Seven Valley Railway from Bridge North. You ride from Bridge North over the Victoria Bridge, very picturesque ride on steam trains. Never done it, but if you like steam trains, it's probably something to, to uh, not be avoided. Yeah, and here we got what would have been the railway bridge, obviously. See it down there, bit of the ubiquitous graffiti. It's a bit like the human lichen graffiti. And you can see this cycle track's been here as long as I can remember, sort of 1980s. But you can really see where the, where the railway line would have been running. Yeah, the walk we're intending to do today does loop round uh, Rebrook Estate just behind me and then come back round here. So hopefully we'll be able to have a look at the bridge from underneath later on in the walk.
it's not flowing. It's not flowing a lot today. It looks kind of muddied up. We'll go and have a closer look at that after. If you were thinking of doing this walk yourself, right here in Rebrook, you've got the shops here and there's parking behind it. Um, so it's a good place to park up and start your walk if, you, if you're gonna take it on. You've got Sainsbury's here, news agent. The White Croft Road, you've got the White Croft Road chippy. In my estimation, that is one of the best, or the best chippy in Shrewsbury. But if you are going to go to the Whitecroft Road Friar, make sure you've got cash. It's cash only. And of course, in my book, cash is king. And cash is control. Our, our control over them, if you know what I mean. So uh, I use cash every Friday and I use cash every day. I remember to get it out just because I'm like that because I don't want to be controlled. It's that simple. And as I said, cash is control. That's enough third rate philosophy today. Yeah, one thing I do like about Rebrook Estate, even though it was built in the early 1970s, it has got that sort of garden city kind of vibe. Yeah, and by garden city, I mean, generally it was the 1920s, 30s developments, sort of post-World War I, where um, the mixture of modern, nice, clean housing for people in them days, mixed with um, greenery and grass and gardens for everyone. Yeah, because you've got little closes like this one, Roundway, I'd call probably starter homes, you know? But they've got that really thoughtful sort of grass landscape bit in the middle. Kids can play out on it, everyone can keep an eye on them. And we're all happy and safe. You don't really get this level of thoughtfulness today, I don't think. In fact, modern, modern developments are generally put up with all that for the greedy developers. That's all they can think of. Yeah, simple things for simple minds. It is quite wild, which is understandable as it's a nature reserve, the Rebrook Valley. I've got quite a good view of it there, looking on down, but I don't want to get any closer to being on down real fast, if you know what I mean. Yeah, looking down from the hilltop onto the valley. Yeah, that path leads to Meal Brace Golf Course, about half a mile up there. We won't be taking that walk today though. Just showing it you. Might do it in future. The Rebrook Blue Bridge. It's been blues for as long as I can remember, which is many years. Many, many years. As you can see we've got paths here that was the one that leads to meal brace golf course i do believe there's a public foot, put, foot path goes right over meal brace golf course when we're doing it today and then you've got another one here so there's loads of walks to do around here we will be coming back at some point in the future to do those yeah just on this side of the blue bridge you've got this really nice kind of swimming hole i'd call it if we were in america i'd say the old swimming hole but we're not we're in rebrook south shrewsbury and you've got these nice ornamental flowers here yeah the blue and amber flowers will be in association with shrewsbury town whose football ground the new meadow is just across this bridge and about a mile over the golf course 
Should we go under the bridge, see the troll? Yeah, let's go under the bridge and see the troll. <laughs> there isn't a troll. Except me. Just under the bridge. Don't know what I expected to find. Yeah, and it looks like these bricks and sort of, uh, it's not actual stone, this is. Reinforced stone. It's been here a long time. I don't know what its story is though. I would like to, but I don't. Yeah, because there's lots of masonry, discarded masonry down here. I don't know if it's from the, the bridge that preceded the one behind me or what. So you've got kind of swimming hole, picnic benches. Yeah, that bit looks like a really deep pool. And then you've got the streamy bits on this side of the island. Yeah, and I just wonder, are these flowers in tribute to someone? Could well be. Yeah, and this estate just over, the, that's just over the other side of the Rebrook, the other side of the valley. That is the actual housing estate, I think, where the um, church, the Anglo-Saxon ancient church built on the Neolithic site is leave a link to the video in the description so uh as the crow flies very short but to drive it you have to go right round from it from here really yeah this fil film today is being is being filmed on the friday the 10th of february 2023 not sure when it will be uploaded because i've got i'm a, quite a way in head ahead now which i like to be but then on the other hand I don't particularly like the releasing content that was filmed months ago. Or should I say, I don't particularly like watching content of people I subscribe from that was, that was filmed months ago. It almost feels out of touch. I don't know if that's just me, but it, this will probably be released three to four weeks after being filmed. Now, feel free to tell me what your thoughts are in the comments whether you like it or whether you don't care, whether it's just me, one of my weird things. But at the way I'm going at the moment, I'm getting very ahead. So I'm just having to think about in what order I release them and whether the season's out of date by the time I release them. I mean, in the bigger scheme of things, it doesn't matter, I suppose, because in two years time or years time even, Nobody will care because, well, it won't matter. It will be irrelevant then. Well, this is a nice, quiet stretch, serene. Probably some fish under there. Not a fisherman myself, but I would imagine that's where they hide out and bask. Wow. We've got a beach down here. This is lovely. Well, this is a bonus, a really hidden, serene beach. I imagine in summer, this would be a lovely place to bring your dogs or even your kids to have a little paddle. It's really nice. And I never knew that it was here ever. I mean, I said I played down here as a kid. I never saw this beach before, but I haven't come down here for years and years and years. So again, I'm just learning with you. They're yeah, going back to the uh, Neolithic burial site with a Saxon church built on it. I would say, I would say this is the field. And if you followed it up here, you'd probably come to the, to the Anglo-Saxon church and the Neolithic burial ground. How many of these people knew they were buying a house 
right next to a Neolithic burial site. Probably none of them. <laughs> I don't know if it would have made any difference to him getting it or, or if the mortgage lenders knew, getting a mortgage. Who knows? Who knows? I don't think anyone cares, really. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. We're right here, at, once again, in the middle of Shrewsbury. Well, not in the middle of Shrewsbury, but we're in right in Shrewsbury. So we're surrounded by town on either on all sides. Yet we're in a idyllic nature reserve, very much like the Weir video we did we did recently. So the, these pockets of tranquility do exist in a pretty built up areas you just got to look for them yeah this little area we're just going to go and have a look at to my knowledge is called the mill pond yeah, you've got this masonry on either side of the river I'm wondering does it suggest a bridge quite possibly or some other light industry that green foot footbridge runs from Reebrook to Sutton Farm. You can see the Reebrook running behind me there. There are actually two Reebrooks in Shropshire. One's down by Ludlow, Cleehill Way, but this one runs through uh, Pontsbury, Minsterley, Hookergate, Baston Hill, and it actually joins the River, River Seven at Colham Head right here in the centre of Shrewsbury. Wind in the willows I can't remember the words to that song Pollution. That is, it's like porridge or something, disgusting Pollution porridge, that's what it looked like Pause it if you want to read it. I'll get you a decent view. You've got a lot of wildlife here. Yeah, as we said, the Rebrook Valley is the green corridor from the countryside right into the heart of Shrewsbury. And I just read on that sign that there was industry light industry mills etc all along the rebrook along its course which we've discovered some of the remains of i think today but as well as um gotta stop saying um, but as well as light industry there was there is to this day all kinds of wildlife here and if you're really lucky you might see otters playing in the the Reebrook. I haven't seen any today, but they are supposed to be present here. You're just looking off the, the greeny blue bridge here. We are pretty high on both sides. Though that's a pretty obvious statement when you're looking into a valley off a bridge. Many years ago, there used to be a really good ropey just to the right here, and it was off a big tree. Really dangerous, really fun. Yeah, the tree would have been about here. It's gone now, I think. Well, it's gone. And it was like a dust bowl down there then, and now it's completely overgrown, but you, you, you had to stand on the tree at sort of that angle and just let yourself go off with the rope, rope swing, and then swing, and it was really high. And I remember it. Yeah, those goalposts have been there for years and years. I mean, I didn't think they did goalposts like that anymore in parks. That was wrong.
yeah, another idyllic spot for wildlife spotting and watching. I really, really would like to see an otter though. I've never seen an otter in the wild and that would be, that would be quite amazing. Yeah, that looks a pretty old tree, that one. Yeah, some of the wildlife trees, meadows, they are really ancient because the monks, right back in the days of Shrewsbury Abbey, of course, used to use this, the Reebrook. A bit further down, we'll show you the stretch in a minute. And they had orchards and it was a minor industry for them. Yeah, it looks like this area got very much flooded in the last month, which doesn't surprise you considering everywhere else was flooded. But you can see the devastation it wrecked. And I think a lot of mud has been displaced and silt. And that's why it's flowing very minimally along here. The bandwidth just isn't, it just isn't much here. Yeah, it's just is a scene of nature devastation. Tree tree got it in the recent storms. And another one. Yeah, I'll tell you another little third rate anecdote that happened here. Once, when I was about eight or nine, I was playing football with some of my mates on the car park at the back back of the quick save it was then, but Sainsbury's today on the car park. And I, the ball got kicked over. I went to get it. And then I woke up three hours later, lying in the bush here, and I don't know what happened. Nobody knows what happened. My mum was terrified because it was like this time of year. So it had got, gone dark and I'd just gone missing. And to this day, I don't know what happened. I just woke up in a bush three hours later. I don't know what happened to the football, but I got in a lot of trouble. But it wasn't really my fault because I don't know what happened to this day. But never mind, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Third rate recollections. Of course, when I had my episode, my disassociative episode, there was no path here then. It hadn't been landscaped, it was literally just bushes and I woke up about there in the middle of one. But then again, my mother says to this day that I wasn't a normal child. I don't really know what she means by that. I thought I was perfectly normal. <laughs> And here I am being perfectly normal now, walking around talking to myself. It's brilliant. But that's the third rate lifestyle. Yeah, it looks like this graffiti is officially licensed by the council. Yeah, and some of it isn't, especially this sort of stuff. But like I said, graffiti is just the human lichen. It just appears everywhere. These are electricity, cable, piping, or gas. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a closer look at the lagoon, shall we? A few moments later. Cool, that took a bit of doing, didn't it? Oh, 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 I almost went then, but I didn't. <laughs> I literally almost went on my, on my butt, on my high knee. Yeah, I imagine it's, well, it's pretty pleasant today, but I imagine it's really nice if you come down here in summer months, really full of nature. We may well come down and do a, an extra video down here sometime, see if we can catch any otters or anything. Because if they're gonna be anywhere, I would say they're probably gonna be in this sort of riverbank, brook bank area. But it would be one of those things, you're gonna, you'd have to spend 
probably hour, unless you're really lucky hours down here to see action and third rate content commonly doesn't have the the specific cameras and equipment to document these things as really they deserve so uh not today anyway let's just look that's where i almost that's where i skidded and almost went on my butt but i didn't because i'm very good at keeping my footing <laughs> thankfully yes yeah, so we we'll just make our way to the final leg of today's journey but we but we started over there walked up there all the way round the back of Rebook Estate, Suburbia, and then made our way round and back this way. So we've done a full circuit. You can park, like I said before, at the Sainsbury's, or I parked on Rebook Avenue, where I started the video. So that, that just made a bigger loop. But there's several walks you can take round here, and we just took the one today. How many gates is that today? It's got to be four or five. Closed successfully. I imagine this is like an overflow sort of culvert, maybe. Obviously it's going over a divot. When I was a child, this area hadn't been landscaped. It was all just bushes here. There was no footpath. And the footpath was actually on that side of the brook. And that's all been reclaimed by nature now. So in the last 20 years, 25 years, I'm not sure when they did it. Since the late 1980s, it's all changed down here. I think it's since the year 2000 though. Yeah, it's changed significantly down here since I was a child. We've got a swan taking shelter in this little little bay, little harbour that's been naturally made next to the bridge and another hidden beach. As a child I did play down here a bit since it was just at the end of my street really. The bridge was different then. I think this has been replaced in the last 20 years and there was, I'm going to tell you another rope swing story now, there was a tree right here with a pretty decent ropey on it and I remember once I went on it by myself, I was down here by myself, slipped, held on to the ropey but didn't get much sort of um, swing and I, I was left dangling here and I just had to wait till it sort of went over a dry bit that I spotted and drop onto it. It's quite hard on the arms, but I still remember it. And the tree's gone now, another tree that's gone from my rope swing days. These have been here years. They, I always used to think they looked like sandbags when I was a kid. But I don't think they are, they're actually stones. Yeah, I think it makes sense that this bridge has been, well, the old bridge has been replaced. It, the one that, the predecessor to this one was probably only that wide. So obviously didn't have room for push chairs or wheelchairs. So it wasn't accessible to everybody. And the path continued down here all the way along there. So that's completely different now. And then this way goes to Laundry Lane the back of Sutton Road. And does anyone local to Shrewsbury of a certain age remember Jimmy the Pig or the Pig Man who you'd see riding around this area in the 80s and probably many years before that on his push bike with a bucket of pig slop and his cap on. I think his um, piggery was just up there at Laundry Lane and there was a big laundry up there. We won't be visiting that today. Again, we'll do that on another video but none of it's there anymore. It's just more light industry that is just history.
Yeah, I'm going to say it does make me feel really nostalgic, this place, for my young childhood. I used to come down here, play with action figures, action G.I. Joe, action force figures down here. And it well, just walking around on here has just brought back all kinds of nostalgic, although inconsequential memories, really. But they just all come back, come back, like what sort of comics I was reading. Not down here, just what I was reading at home. When I came down here, came back, like, um, Grew the Barbarian. It's actually Grew the Wanderer. But anyway. It's just these mad things that nostalgia does to you. I remember being down here in 1987. Yeah, I've heard that the monks from the Abbey did keep orchards down here in the pre reformation days and it's always felt like a sort of orchard down here had that sort of atmosphere <laughs> an appley sort of atmosphere appley perry sort of atmosphere yeah i just read on a sign that milling as we suspected was was carried out on this stretch of the rebrook that we've been covering today and and that went from saxon days up to the late 1800s and things that were being milled went from the usual corn, flour, that type of stuff, right up to barium. And the milling rights were hotly contested and sought after. And a lot of money was, met, was to be made from milling. So we've had a nice light industry walk today as well. And we didn't even know this when we started off the walk. And to finish off the walk we're going to go under this underpass that goes under the old Shrewsbury bypass here at the end of Rebrook Avenue again I remember coming down here as a kid a lot more graffiti on the wall but on the sides then Yeah, we're just sort of uh, looping the walk here because we started just up there, not on the lamppost, just past the lamppost where the, the bridge used to be 40 years ago. Yeah, here on Rebrook Avenue, that was my, that was my house in, from 1984 to 1988. A lot of memories. So thank you for watching to the end of third rate content. It's been a walk up memory lane and we've also found quite a bit of light industry, the, the relics of light industry, relics of the former railway and a really nice nature walk that's really easily accessible to anybody who wants to do it. It's all there and there's several walks off that one nature walk which we hope to do more of in future but anyway it's been a lot of fun today very much enjoyed it as i always do and uh, if you've watched this far i'm sure that you've somewhat enjoyed it anyway so uh so don't forget to leave a like subscribe and by all means do comment i do love a good comment but if i don't see you soon i'll see you three times as soon third rate content sign out bye bye